This video is on all the stuff to do with quadratics that you never wanted to know. You need to know it for LXL Maths GCSE and it covers stuff like quadratic graphs, quadratic sequences, quadratic equations and all that sort of stuff. First we're going to look at quadratic sequences and a sequence is quadratic if the second difference is constant and the second difference is the difference between the differences of the numbers if that makes sense. So the one on the left isn't quadratic because all the second differences are different whereas the one on the right they've all got the same second difference as 4 so it's quadratic. The position to term rule of a quadratic formula is always of the form tn which basically means the rule in terms of n equals a n squared plus b n plus c where a b and c are all constant so they're all numbers that i mean they're probably all different numbers they could be the same but they're all the same number regardless of what n is we've got an example of a quadratic sequence in the right hand corner there and you can see that the second difference is four and in our position to term rule, a is always half of the second difference. So in this case, a is 2 because 4 times a half is 2. So we now know that the rule for this sequence must be 2n squared plus bn, we don't know b as yet, plus c. And we can work out what b and c are in a sec. To work out what b is, we have to take the quadratic term from the sequence so that we're left with a linear sequence. Because obviously linear sequence is much easier to solve. So we've got our sequence, which is 3, 11, 23, 39, 59. We've got our quadratic term, which is 2n squared, so that's 1 times 2, which is 2, 4 times 2, which is 8, 9 times 2, 18, so on and so forth. And then we take that quadratic term from our sequence, and we're left with a linear sequence, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And we can see that the difference is always 2, so we know that the nth term of the linear part of the sequence must involve the 2 times table, so it must be... 2n squared plus 2n plus c and we can take this 2n from the linear sequence that we had so we'll have taking 2n so that's 2 4 6 8 10 from the linear sequence we're left with minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and this minus 1 is the final difference which is c so we know that the final quadratic rule theme jig is tn equals 2n squared plus 2n minus 1 hope you could keep up with that if you couldn't then just go back rewind turn my voice off take your own time do what you want i don't care moving on from quadratic sequences to quadratic equations which are just as boring unfortunately and a quadratic equation contains a squared term as the highest power so they should rearrange to look like this so they should be ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero with a b and c all being constant numbers they're all the same number regardless of what x is but you might have to do some rearranging so they might try to trick you by putting bx on one side or something but just you can take it off do what you want to make sure it looks like that before you start solving it because otherwise you'll hit a few problems if you're lucky you'll get a quadratic equation that can be solved through factorization and an example of this is x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. And you factorise it into two brackets. So you'll have x plus 6, x plus 2 equals 0 in this case. With the 6 and 2, so the second numbers in each bracket, should add to give b, which is 8, and multiply to give c, which is 12. So now we know that x plus 6 brackets, x plus 2 brackets equals 0. So we know that for the equation to equal 0, at least one set of brackets must add to 0. So we know that x has got to equal either minus 6, because then 0 times x plus 2 will equal 0, because obviously x plus 2 doesn't matter what it is, it will still equal 0. Or x plus 6 could be a bigger figure, but x could be minus 2, making x plus 2 0. So x plus 6 times 0 equals 0. You've always got to write down both of the solutions, very important. Unfortunately, some quadratic equations can't be solved using factorisation, so we have to use the quadratic formula, and it means we're likely to get some decimal places, which is a bit unfortunate. So these questions tend to come up on the calculator paper. And the quadratic formula, they give it to you, but here it is. It's x equals minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Very important stuff there. I've heard that we may need it in later life, but I'm not convinced. So what you have to do is substitute the numbers into the formula with the a, which is the 2 in this case. So the coefficient of x squared will go where it says a. The coefficient of x goes where b, and the extra random constant thing at the end goes where you have the c. So you'll substitute them all in, 
and you use your calculator to do the rest. So you have to do the calculation twice because you can see it's plus minus. It means you have to plus it once and you've got to minus it once. So the first time do it with the plus and write that down, then do it with the minus and write that down. And I would do this one, but I've got no idea where my calculator is, which is a bit worrying given that my exam's in a few days. But I'm sure it will work out, hopefully. Say you're looking at your quadratic equation for a long time and you can't solve it. You can work out which method to use very easily. I mean, the quadratic formula will always work, but sometimes it's just easier to factorise, especially if you don't have a calculator. So the value in the square root of the quadratic formula is called the discriminant, and this is b squared minus 4ac, and you can use this to work out how to solve the equation and how many solutions there will be, so it's very, very useful. So you stick all of your numbers into the discriminant thing, type it into your calculator or work it out yourself if you've got a calculator in your brain. And if your discriminant is a square number, the equation will factorise. Yay! If it's not a square number, unfortunately, the formula has to be used. If your discriminant is greater than zero, there's two solutions. If it's equal to zero, there is one repeated solution. And if it's less than zero, there's no solution, so you can just give up. Completing the square is very useful, and completing the square is when you write your quadratic as a squared bracket plus an extra term. And some quadratics factorise into squared brackets without the extra term, and that's really nice and pleasant and happy. And quadratics will factorise into the form x plus p bracket squared plus q, where p is half the coefficient of the x term in the original quadratic equation. And we'll explain all that on the next slide. To explain this, I thought we'd better use an example. So we've got x squared plus 10x plus 15 must go to x plus p squared plus q. And we know that p is half of the coefficient of x, and the coefficient of x in this case is 10, which is underlined. And if we divide that by 2, we get 5. So we know that x plus 5 squared plus q, which I've put as a question mark there for some reason, equals 0. The question mark has to be a number, like an actual constant number thingy, and because we know that altogether it's got to equal x squared plus 10x plus 15, we know that it's got to be 15 minus 25, because 25 is what we've got from the 5 squared, which equals minus 10. So we know that x plus 5 squared minus 10 equals 0. I hope you could keep up with that. hope it made sense. If it didn't, just pause and look back over it and hopefully it'll all sink in and you'll have a sudden burst of understanding. We can actually use completing the square to solve equations. So say we've got our completed square here, x plus 4 squared minus 9 equals 0. We know that x plus 4 squared equals 9. So that x plus 4 has to equal either 3 because 3 squared is 9 or minus 3 because minus 3 squared is 9. So we know that x has got to be either minus 1 or minus 7 because either of those will add to give 3 or minus 3, and we'll get our lovely 9. Completing the square can be used to find the minimum value that any, I don't know, I don't like the word quadratic equation, but it, whatever it says there can have, but it basically means the lowest point in the parabola. So we know that if we've got our completed square here, minus 9 is a constant, so the expression is smallest when the number in the brackets is equal to 0, because if it's any bigger than 0, it'll square to give a greater number, so the expression will be greater, and if it's any smaller than zero, it will also square to give a number greater than zero, because any negative number squared gives a positive number. So we want the bit in the brackets to equal zero, and the time when it equals zero is when x is equal to minus four. So the minimum point in the parabola is when x is minus four and y is minus nine. And the minimum point is always the lowest value of x, comma, the constant outside the square. So that's a really important thing to know there. If you're sketching quadratic graphs and you want to find the axes, 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 intercepts, you substitute either x equals 0 or y equals 0 into the equation. So say you've got the equation y equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 2, and you want to find the y-axis intercept, you make x equal 0 and then solve the equation to work out what y is, so you'll know what the y-axis intercept is, because it will always be 0, or f 0 and then whatever y is, and then you can do the same for x. And I should have done an example, but I must have been too lazy. Sorry. We can solve complex equations using graphs if we split our equation into two equations. Fun, fun! And we'll do all this in the next slide, but you should give your solutions in pairs of x's and y's as you read them off the graph, so you'll have your two graphs and 
they'll hopefully cross twice and at each point where they cross you take the coordinates and you write down x equals whatever, y equals whatever and you should have got four of those in the end. Well, two x's and two y's. So if you get a question on this, they'll give you a graph that they might have drawn on for you and you'll be told to draw another graph to solve a different equation. So you'll basically have to transform the graph you need into the graph you're given. And this will all make sense in the next slide, hopefully. So we're going to explain this with an example, and I'm sorry about what it says there. I was in a really sarcastic mood last night. And so say you've been given the graph y equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 4, and you need to solve 3x squared plus 6x equals 0. First, you've got to transform your graph that you've been told to solve into the graph that you've been given. And if you look at it here, you subtract 4x and subtract 4 to get the blue graph. So you draw the graph of minus 4x minus 4, so y equals minus 4x minus 4, onto your graph paper, and the places where the graphs cross should give your solutions. And I hope that made sense. And that is all the stuff on quadratics, hopefully. And I thought I'd put a maths joke here, I couldn't think of anything really related, so I found this one. Uh, the image doesn't belong to me, copyright, la la la. Uh, anyway, and that is the end of the maths quadratic video. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at explaining things. Go back, watch it again, watch it without my voice, go on my maths, go eat some food and cry yourself to sleep. I don't care, do what you want. Good luck in the exam.